It's the home stretch of the U.S. midterm election campaign, with moderates feeling the squeeze on both sides of the aisle. Later, Donald Trump travels to West Virginia and Indiana, two states he carried in 2016, and that feature tight races. In other parts, Republican candidates sometimes prefer to play down their affiliation with the president. Philip Crowther filed this report from the suburbs of Washington in Maryland. Nice. The local village parade brings out the old fire trucks, the Boy Scouts, and why not Paddington Bear in a convertible? But it's election season, and every single political candidate for office is here too. This is Jay Huang, Republican, running for sheriff. Hey. Those ubiquitous Make America Great Again hats, they're hard to come by in this contested and more moderate area. In fact, Jay Huang comes across just the one. Oh, got my vote. Yeah. <laughs> Huang says he is running on local issues and skirts the subject of his party's leader as much as possible. Some of the people when I come up to, you know, they, they are focused in that. The vast majority of the people, right, they're welcome and they look for who the candidate is the more than the party. As a citizen, you know, I'm still a commissioned officer in the military. You know, he's a commander in chief, right? I took an oath to this country and I took an oath to the Constitution. For Democrats, the choice is an easy one. Candidates up and down the ballot across the country are running against Donald Trump. But Republicans have to make up their mind. Are they running with or against the U.S. president? There's one candidate in this same state who is singing a different tune. Liz Matori is Republican, ex-Democrat, and a supporter of Donald Trump. That won't get her votes in a place like this, an American Legion veterans club full of traditional African-American Democrats. Liz Matori has been fighting an uphill battle. I was disinvited from my Thanksgiving because of my party affiliation and my support of Trump. So once I lost half my family, all bets are off. But what I do have is the community on all sides, all colors, especially the working class white folks. I may introduce Much like the candidate for sheriff, Liz Matori doesn't like to mention Trump of her own volition. There wasn't a future for me. And she won't be seen wearing one of Trump's red hats either. Here, Democrats tend to win by two thirds of the vote. Well, for more, we're joined by Oliver Griffith, former director of the American Chamber of Commerce here in France. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Your reaction to, to, to that report and whether or not candidates want to distance themselves or align themselves with the Well, US it's party. a super interesting election. Obviously, the Democrats are, are all for Trump and the Republicans are kind of straddling. Uh, politicians have always straddled in the middle. They will say what they think voters will want to hear. In this case, if they're in districts around Washington, D.C., which I think voted 90 percent Hillary Clinton and is very liberal and has a lot of... Uh, government employees who are still suffering under toxic shock from Trump in their jobs or in, and thus the families also, they, they're going to not want to mention Trump, even if they hold traditional and Republican values. It's strange because there seem to be parallel universes in this election. Um, according to the Center for Responsive Politics, it's already the most expensive uh, midterm race ever. $5.2 billion has been spent. And what's interesting to see are the pledges by the business community. Now, the, Ameri the U.S. Chamber of Commerce giving the lion's share to Republican candidates, even though many businessmen don't agree uh, with the, the U.S. president when it comes to tariffs and uh, when it comes to his uh, rhetoric on immigration. Well, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which I know relatively well, has always given money to both sides, definitely more to Republicans, but they look at local uh, races a lot to see who will vote how on what issue for internal uh, economic uh, measures and also on the international side. What's interesting in this, though, is that uh, the Economist recently, the magazine, uh, showed that the Democrats have an overwhelming majority in, in giving, actually, in, in donations, and usually, that usually the parties that have had that have won big time in the midterm election. So they give the Democrats a 92% chance of winning. And they're getting support both from uh, business and individuals and unions, a traditional base, uh, which is somewhat new for the Democratic Party, that business is contributing so much. And not just the, uh, uh, the, uh, the kind of uh, Facebooks and Amazons and, and those companies. Not, yeah, not because tra traditionally companies. you've got Silicon Valley, which gives to Democrats, and 
um, people who work in, say, the defense sector, energy, uh, these kinds of, uh, of fields who give to Republicans. Um, Wall Street this time, for the first time since 2008, giving more to Democrats than Republicans. What does that tell you? Well, there's a lot of companies that are worried. A lot of companies know a lot more about international economics and supply chains than Donald Trump seems, and his supporters seem to know or want to admit. In fact, they see these tariffs and, and kind of the the abrogation of American economic leadership. They're not going to reward for the, for the record highs in the stock market? The record highs come from the Obama administration. And those uh, those people who follow the economics relatively closely know that. Of course, Trump will try to take credit for it. And then, of course, some of it comes from this uh, huge tax cut that he did, which was absolutely unnecessary in time of economic growth, and which, which will mortgage America's future with a lot of debt uh, for years to come. That's one of the main danger, dangers of what he's done economically. That tax cut, though, when you look at Again, at those numbers from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, it appears as though that seems to override everything. Those those business leaders love the tax cuts. Uh, business leaders will always love tax cuts, but there's a number of wiser business leaders, the Warren Buffett types, who say, "Look, this was the wrong type type of tax cut, and at the wrong time." So business is 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 starting to turn around because the traditional. Uh, alliances of Democrats, which are unions and kind of anti-big business, and Republican, which is pro-big business and pro-free free trade, is totally broken down under Donald Trump, like so much else. Donald Trump is not a free trader, and the Democrats are now the free traders. That's a total reversal. And yet, again, a, a lot of money going into Republican candidates from that Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, they all play both sides. <laughs> um, w w one, we, we haven't talked about the Democrats, and what does the business community think of, uh, of a Democratic Party, which is split into two factions, right, between the moderates and those that are more on the left, closer to Bernie Sanders. That, that is, of course, is, is uh, the, big, the big play within the Democratic Party. If the left uh, kind of takes control of the party, whether after they win the House or the Senate or not, or in the future, that's obviously the older wing of the Democratic Party. You have some very uh, interesting social policies, but who are not generally the, the free traders and who don't emphasize kind of the more business-friendly economic policy. So it's preferable for the Democrats that the moderate wing, the centrist uh, wing, uh, wing will, will take control and be the dominant wing, because they can attract the moderate Republicans, and, and in the long run, it'll do the Democratic Party better. I just want to call up one last time that, that chart uh, from, uh, from, uh, that, that was published uh, in the Financial Times earlier this week for a source to the Center for Responsive Politics. This is the amount from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. You still see that it is the lion's share uh, that are given to Republican candidates in races that are taking place across the United States next Tuesday. I just want one more time to ask you about just all the money. Uh, it, 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 every election cycle, it seems to be more and more and more. How much does money matter? So if we're talking about Democrats have uh, gotten more money, does that guarantee that they do better? Not necessarily, because Donald Trump won uh, the presidential election with very little money because he controlled the, the media, or at least the media presence, whether positive or negative. You know, even bad media is good media in his, in his view. And so he got a lot of free publicity. Uh, Hillary Clinton had more money, but money still counts, certainly. Although there's a new factor in American politics, and that's called faith. Now, that's, America's a very religious society, and a lot of uh, Donald Trump supporters are quite religious evangelicals. And, and so they kind of choose candidates by faith, faith in this idea that he can bring back the old America of 20 or 30 years ago, which of course is not true, and that he will be good for their pocketbook, which is also not true because his policies are actually not supporting uh, long-term uh, growth in America, the kind of growth that you need for the working class whites who voted for him. So it's money, but also faith now. Oliver Griffith, one final question for you. Talking about faith, uh, there was that horrific shooting that took place last weekend in Pittsburgh uh, at a synagogue. There's been uh, political violence. There's been harsh political discourse. Is that going to, in the end, help or hurt the uh, the sitting party? That's very hard to say. It might. It, it, I think it will ultimately hurt them. And the fact that Trump just said now that he, he, he would consider having the army shoot at the Honduran migrants that are going to come to the Mexican border, I think that will scare off some of his borderline supporters. The other ones, his real base of 30, 35 percent will go gung-ho, this is America we want, strong. And, uh, and these are isolated cases of crazies in the synagogue and elsewhere. And this doesn't really, really represent our values, but 
that we want a strong America. So we'll have to wait and see. November 6th is going to be extremely interesting. I wouldn't make any clear predictions, although most of the polls say 70, 80 percent that, that the Democrats will take at least the House. But then most of those same polls said that Trump would lose and Hillary Clinton would be president. Well, they, they did indeed. Oliver Griffith, former director of the American Chamber of Commerce in France, thank you for being with us. Thank you.